Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. In the last episode we talked about the difference between jacking and lifting, as well as how to make yourself a foldable crane. Now, we want to replace our engine, uh, mostly for tutorial reasons, we want to replace our engine with a gasoline engine rather than a diesel engine. For this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need the proper engine. For We need to find an engine that is appropriate for a vehicle of this size, which can be a little difficult because it's not always the easiest thing to understand the difference in vehicles or in engines, and I still don't really understand. If we look at the 4.5 liter V8, basically what that means is that this uh, engine occupies, is it the cylinders occupy 4.5 liters or is it the entire engine occupies 4. Point? I so I don't know vehicles obviously in real life I'm not a, I'm not a car guy I've already said some dumb things in this series about vehicles where I showed my ignorance so don't judge me um, but it's the displacement of either the entire engine it seems weird to me that an engine would be only 4.5 liters so I'm willing to guess it's the displacement of like you know what? I don't know. Let's not talk about that. And then a V8, I believe, represents the number of um, um, like pistons, right? And in the in the engine, so so we're gonna want something that is comparable to this. And the only metric I really know of is to compare the size and the the number of cylinders. So it's like, other than that, how do I compare? I, I don't think you can see a uh, if we go to the engine yeah we we don't see any information about the engine if we look uh here and we use the brackets to move through here uh we're looking for it's not even list okay a combustion engine diesel fuel uh biodiesel did we ever talk about biodiesel diesel you can make in the late game uh but gasoline you can't uh you can make biodiesel but it never matters to me because by the uh, gas is pretty fuel is pretty plentiful there's almost never a reason to go the whole way to making your own biodiesel other than for role play reasons which if you want to do that that's perfectly fine uh but whatever not really for me provides motive power yes requires controls drains battery uh will charge a battery yeah, so it does not give any information about the power of this engine. There's no quantifiable, there's no numbers we can look at and compare directly to other engines. All we have is this here. So basically, we're looking for something comparable to 4.5 liters, something comparable to, to being a V8. So we will look for that. And then the other thing that we're going to need is fuel because we don't have gasoline. We only have diesel. And when we put a gas engine in it, we're not going to be able to use the diesel engine anymore. Now, normally I would remove this engine and go out on my hunt, uh, but I'm not gonna remove this because I don't know what it requires to install a new one. And I don't wanna remove this before I know that because I don't wanna remove the engine and then find out we need mechanics eight or something, which we don't, but uh, some higher mechanics and then we just don't have a vehicle because I screwed myself and we have to grind our skills. So we're going to go out looking for a new engine. Uh, we're not going to need all the tools we have. We're not going to need the welder. We're not going to need probably the hacksaw. We'll keep the hammer and screwdriver for, yeah, we damaged our wrench from smashing. Yeah, never smash with your wrench. We don't need the home wrecker, but that goes on a different pile. Um, I mean, we don't need most of this stuff that we're carrying. So let's dump some of this. Um, Drop the jack as well, I guess. Drop the home wrecker. Yeah, it's fine. Wield the spear before we head out. And we're going to need... We have the crane we're going to need. Probably going to need the wrench. I'm not sure uh, what quality of bolt turning, but we're just going to take the wrench for the purposes of removing the engine. We need something else. What am I forgetting? Oh, containers for the fuel. Yeah, so we're going to need some empty jugs here. Uh, gal... Nope, that's not how you spell gal. Gallon jug we'll take, uh, and then we'll need a rubber hose. 13 rubber hoses, yep, when we were gathering materials for crafting. And we're going to head up, and we're going to hope to find the vehicle. We, we'll eat something before we go. How's our weight? We're at normal weight. Let's eat something with a fair number of calories in it. A lot of rotten food, unsurprisingly. Is there any food we can craft? Let's start a fire. That way uh, it won't be blacked out. 
if you try to look for something to craft before you start your fire and if you don't have any other cooking tools nearby you will not get a list so like if we go into food you'll see all this stuff is blacked out and that's because uh, none of we have no fire material so even if we have all the other materials to craft this we don't have the fire so they're not displayed so the only recipes that will be displayed as craftable will be things that don't require a fire obviously that's not the majority of food uh, you need a fire for the majority of food so let's start a fire and you'll see this list is now expanded pretty considerably so let's see what we can make here uh, we can make bread. I mean, we do have a lot of flour. Uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned it. That's why I was picking up jugs of cooking oil is because it used to be, uh, depending on the bread, is, is required. Uh, last I checked, although admittedly that was a long time ago. I don't really cook anymore in the game. Was it the Johnny Cakes? I used to make a lot of Johnny Cakes. Yeah, they require oil. Um, I made these a lot when I first started playing because uh, they had a really long shelf life. Two weeks now. Used to be longer, I think. Uh, Maybe I'm misidentifying the bread items, but we're whatever. Um, so we have deluxe scrambled eggs we can make. These have a lot of calories. Unfortunately, it would require us to use our powdered eggs. Those are non-perishable, so I'd rather keep them. You know what? It doesn't matter because, and it doesn't matter because we're going to be using non-perishable meat products anyway. Go ahead and make, yeah, two because that will use a full can of chicken. And it doesn't matter if the powdered eggs are in a sealed container or not. It's not going to count them as open. And then we have to use 34 before they go bad. It doesn't work that way for powdered eggs. So we'll go ahead and make these. And we'll use the canned chicken. Dispose, store in inventory, blah, 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 etc. Your hands are getting warm. Yeah, unsurprisingly. 187 calories is not a lot of calories. But we'll go ahead and just gorge ourselves on some deluxe scrambled eggs. I have not had good good eggs in a while. I really do like eggs. Someone in my family made like three dozen hard boiled eggs last week. Um, they, they just, they don't understand. <laughs> they don't get um, coronavirus stuff. Uh, let's, let's not drive this actually. No, let's, let's drive it up there. Go ahead and fold this up and we'll put this in our inventory. Let's drive up there. Um, that way we can just change the engine up there instead of bringing it all the way back to base. So we'll drive up into town. I do recommend... Oh, man, yeah, my computer is, is sluggish today. I don't want to overpress the buttons uh, and end up buffering and crashing into things. I'm very bad at driving in Cataclysm. Something about it is still very counterintuitive to me. So I was thinking this big truck actually would likely have an engine we're interested in. So let's go ahead and park our vehicle here. Stop driving, which will turn off the engine. I never did give a good driving tutorial. I I don't think I'm the kind of person you want to learn to drive from in the game. Uh, in real life, I'm an excellent driver. But in Cataclysm, I bump into everything. So I tried to give a tutorial. It went pretty poorly. And I don't know that we're going to be trying again, honestly. So don't hate me for that. But Okay, so let's compare engines. This is a 2.8 liter, which is obviously smaller than 4.5 liter, and it's a V6 as opposed to a V8, so obviously less powerful. Uh, I was thinking this might also have... So this is the same quality of engine that we currently have in our vehicle, except this one is gasoline, and it's faulty. So if we go to mend this, what does this require to mend? We talked about this before. Um, anytime a engine is listed as faulty, that means there are several problems with it. And depending on what those problems are, it can have different effects on the, the engine. So for instance, you might have an engine that is faulty that runs great. It just uses up more fuel than usual, that kind of thing. The, re the way we see this is to press the M key for mending, and it will tell us what is wrong with the engine. So this engine has a faulty starter motor, and so in order to fix that, if we press enter, it will bring up, hey, which thing do you want to fix? There's only one on this, but... Sometimes there are three or four things wrong with an engine. And it will bring up a menu explaining what you need to fix this. Uh, it requires a small electric motor, which I don't believe we have. We have some tiny and micro motors, but I don't think we have small ones. Um, and what this will do is is it, it will not allow this vehicle to start, I believe, ever. Um, used to be that it would still sometimes start, but I think that's been changed. 
am I am I driving? I'm not driving. You hear clicking, you hear clicking, you hear clicking, fails to start, fails to start, fails to start. Um, you hear it did start. No, it did not start. Okay. So yeah, it's not starting. And in order to fix that, we need a small electric motor. Now, I think if we take apart another engine, give me my crane, activate Frasier. I believe if we remove another engine and disassemble it, it may give us a small motor. So let's take this engine out of here. Seven liter V12 in the sports car. That's way better. See, and this is what is confusing to me. This little car, which is a sports car, so you expect it to have a good engine, has a 7 liter V12, whereas this has a 4.5 liter V8. Is this not better? Like, significantly better? Can I turn this engine? No, you don't have fuel in your tank. What do you need to be fixed? A lot of stuff. I'm not going to bother with trying to fix a bunch of things. Uh, let's just grab a not great engine. So we'll remove this car's engine and see if we can take it apart and see if it will give us a small motor. I don't know if Cataclysm works that way. Obviously, if it's required to start the engine, then every engine should have one. But I don't know if that is actually how Cataclysm works. Sometimes stuff like that is not actually how it works. In order to remove an engine, we need to first remove the alternator. And we'll remove that. If you don't know, an alternator is just a thing that will convert um, engine power into battery power. So if you have an engine, it will run your car. If you have an alternator, it will charge your batteries. So we can put an engine in our vehicle and not put an alternator in. It will still run, but the battery will never be charged from the engine. So we'll eventually run out of battery power unless we have some other source of, of battery power. So here we have a... 2.8 liter V6 engine. If we take this apart, we get two drive belts, an air filter, an automotive filter, a small electric motor, which is what we need, mechanical pumps. So we would get all the materials required to mend this engine. I don't know, based solely on these numbers, this seems way better than the engine in the other vehicles. So we're gonna try the sports car engine what concerns me is that it says safe and top speed are 66 and 90 miles an hour, and that's at a very low weight. And if we look at the ambulance, 20 and 30 for double the weight. We're gonna we're gonna try this engine, I think. So take apart the engine, I don't know, 40 minutes apparently. Uh, and it's pretty damaged, so we may not get all of these components. You fail to recover, you fail to recover, you fail to recover. I mean, we got some things, not really what we wanted necessarily, but we got some things. So let's try mending this engine. Mend engine. Uh, we need a new drive belt, which we do have. So we'll replace the drive belt. We need a air filter, which we don't have. And we need a water pump, which we do. We'll go ahead and install that. And then we can actually make a makeshift uh, filter we don't have the recipe on us. It may be in one of our books back at base or we may not have it at all. So without that, what is this engine? What is the problem with this engine? Reduces fuel efficiency and increases smoke production. That's not a big deal. Um, fuel efficiency doesn't really matter when gasoline is everywhere. Extra smoke um, maybe could be an issue if it deploys smoke in our tile, but most of the time it deploys smoke at the rear of the vehicle. I believe um, the wiki, which is outdated and can't be trusted, says that wherever you install the muffler is where it will um, deploy smoke. So I don't know if that's true, but the muffler is in the rear here. So I'm gonna just hope that that's correct. And we're gonna pull this engine out and see if we can replace uh, our engine with this with this engine. You now we need to find the engine in the left hand side here and we will remove the 7 liter V12 engine and we have to remove the alternator combustion engine. It doesn't say anything about being a, a small engine or what kind of alternator it requires. Let's remove the alternator, remove the engine and then let's try installing the engine. V12 requires mechanic six. So this is why we did not remove 
our engine yet because this would require mechanics six and we're only at mechanics four. And it would take us quite a long time to get to mechanic six. So that's not great. Um, so this engine, and I'm willing to bet that that's based on the power of the engine. Let's um, pull an engine out of this one and see if it requires the same skill level. If it does, we'll have to go grind our skills until we're able to. 2.8 liter V6, go ahead and pull out the engine here. I don't often do this, so this is something that I don't have a lot of experience with. So talking about tool with lifting, uh, we're not at the front of the vehicle like we discussed in our last episode. You need to be near the tile of what you're trying to remove. Go ahead and pull this out and let's try to install it. Requires mechanics three. So it is based on the quality of the engine. So uh, we will butcher this engine, pull, pull, pull the engine out of there. We will butcher the engine to try and get the small electric motor, um, which we got. So now we can mend this engine. <laughs> I realize this is a bit silly. Mend the engine with a new starter motor. So it has been fully replaced and we can now remove this engine and the truck alternator. And we'll try to install this engine, install. This requires mechanics three, so we do have the skills required to install this engine. So we're gonna haul this over here. Okay, and we'll drop that right there. Go ahead and remove the engine that's currently in our vehicle. Remove the alternator. We already had a good truck alternator. Um, used to be, up. Oh, we ran out of light, so we're not gonna be able to install this right now. So we're just gonna have to leave this here. Used to be that the, the alternator that you put on determined how much energy went from the engine to your batteries. So if you had a, um, like a small, I think bike alternator or motorcycle alternator, they gave the least power. Then the car alternator was slightly better and then the truck alternator was the best. You cannot do vehicle work at night. So unless we bring a light out here, we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow. What do we have in our inventory? 11 liters. What we can do is drop a lot of our tools here that we're gonna need later. Keep the hammer. You know, we're gonna go back to base because I want the hacksaw. What we're gonna do, since it's dark, we're gonna try to push up to this other gun shop See what we can loot. That was my plan for when the sun went down. I really thought we'd be able to change the engine before that though. So that's a little disappointing. Why, um, why is everything grayed out instead of showing me a light radius around me and sepia? It must just be a bright night, I guess. So let's drop some of this stuff we're not gonna need. Um, keep the SIG. Leave the filter, copper wire, drive belt. I don't need any of this stuff. Don't need this. Keep the screwdriver and hammer. Keep the wrench, I guess. Drop the gallon jug. We're down to two liters, but we're gonna need to take the hacksaw with us. Hack. Uh, because we may need to cut our way into the gun shop. We have the steel spear. We're wearing our armor, although it's a bit lacking on our arms, and by a bit lacking, I mean we have no protection whatsoever on our arms. And we don't have anything that we can wear. Uh, first of all, put this fire out. There's no reason for that to still be on. Um, do I have any clothes at all that would be beneficial here for our arms? Compression top does not even cover your arms. Coats, obviously we could put on a coat, but it's like summertime now. Or getting close to summertime, it would be very warm. We don't have any light jackets to wear. Emergency jacket has a warmth of 25, two and two protection. I mean, we literally have nothing on our arms at all right now. The fur coat or great coat is the best bet for our arms, but we uh, we don't want to wear those with the um, the eat the the vest that we're wearing. I think we just go out with bare arms, which is. Uh, <laughs> A little bit of a scary thing. We're gonna take our uh, shopping cart with us. That way, hopefully, we can only make one trip to the gun shop and we don't have to double back uh, because it's a pretty long walk. We could even take the bike if we were so inclined. 
um, but if I recall they don't have a seat on them. So we're going to be a little careful because it seems to be pretty bright out here. Look at this mess I made. We're just going to head through here. Brother's out in the hallway on the phone being very loud. Because he likes to be loud and he doesn't think about other people. Which is, uh, you know, I try to sequester myself in the room and be quiet when I'm recording and things. But, you know, whatever. Uh, here's a good truck that we would use to harvest lots of cargo spaces for when we put them in our vehicle. It's looking really clear here. Uh, I'm waiting to see, I was going to say, some zombies. There's a small horde. Most likely they were attacking a vehicle. A skeleton can be a little tricky um, because they are pretty resistant to like spears and things. Here's another uh, diesel vehicle that we could have harvested uh, diesel from because they have these big exterior tanks. Do I see bullet casings? I do see bullet casings. It's possible that they're just randomly dropped in the world, but it's also possible that there's a turret over here. We're heading to the right to the gun shop. The problem is it's very near to, can you guys see me? I don't think they can see me, even though we can see them really clearly. I don't understand why they can't see me but we're just gonna go while we have the opportunity small group of enemies to our south these are probably coming from the baseball diamond i had someone today comment and say hey you know it's a baseball diamond a lot of people congregate at those sort of like stadiums and stuff during emergencies and for you know response stuff and I totally get what you're saying, but also it's a baseball diamond. There's no shelter there except for a couple dugouts. It's not like a stadium. And uh, there's nothing in the game to indicate that that's what they were implying. Uh, you know, if they had put up some tents and like made it, uh, I like threw a bunch of garbage around or something that hinted at that narrative. Uh, we lockpicked immediately. So normally, so this is a gun shop. Normally in the gun shop, um, historically, I've always cut the bars and broken in the windows. That's a dumb way to do things uh, if you can avoid it because breaking the windows will set off an alarm which will trigger um, a response from like robots and things. And cutting the metal bars takes a long time and makes a lot of noise. So all these enemies that are out here would hear us and migrate over to us. If we go inside and the zombies smash something and the alarm goes off, they're all going to come over here anyway. So we need to be careful. Um, and in this one, this particular layout has this back door, which has a pickable door on it. And we were able to just pick it immediately. So we're not as um, put out as we could have been. But we are going to be careful. Again, if they come over here and smash these windows, we're going to be in for it. A, a lot of noise. This is like the best possible gun shop layout we could have hoped for. If you've never really been in a gun shop, um, these are ammunition vending machines. So if we pop over here, you'll see it has quite a lot of ammunition for sale. Each one of these is a full stack. So this um, 357 SIG is actually 50 rounds. We have a lot of... Uh, cash so we're going to buy every single bullet out of these machines because it's going to amount to quite a lot so if I just hit enter here um, just from that one machine which we didn't even spend a thousand dollars I don't remember what this said but I'm pretty sure it was seven thousand and something and you'll see we got several hundred rounds from that now the bean bags are pretty garbage 22 is like absolutely something I never use uh, but there's a lot of bullets here uh, which can be it is a great source of ammunition. Obviously, the guns are also nice. Not sure why you have loaded guns on display. I thought these were all um, empty when they were on display like this, but that's fine. We got the M1 Grand. Everyone is familiar with the Grand. If you're not, then you probably haven't been on the internet or played video games in your entire life. A 22 and a 270. I don't really love. Um, None of those, uh, the, the 22 is the most common ammunition of those three guns that we found. Um, I've, I literally almost never see the 270s and then um, the 30 out six is a little bit hard to come by as well. We have a shotgun, 
which we already have many shotguns. We have a magazine for the M14, which is a rifle. A couple stacks of ammunition here. You'll see we've already like quintupled our previous ammunition storage. We had virtually no ammunition and we've gotten quite a lot of it uh, in just a few you know, seconds spent in the gun shop. Problem is the gun shops are few and far between. The 410 triple aught shot is like, it's just ball bearings basically in, in, in a shell, I believe. Uh, the triple lot, the, the zeros represent the gauge of the, the, the balls, I believe is how that works. I'm not 100% by all of this. Not really finding as much 223 as I would like. Um, but then again, that's not like a super common civilian ammunition, I don't think. Um, and then we have a locked area back here. Dragon's Breath Shell, I believe, will set the enemies on fire. I'm not sure. And we'll have to get close to the lockers to see. Can't get leverage because we don't have something to pry with, so we'll have to use our... Well, there's the alarm. Okay. Well, I would love to get in here. You hear glass breaking. So the positive part of this is that they can't really come in the front because it's reinforced. The problem is they can come in the rear. So we're going to take this opportunity to leave rather than try to engage uh, and whatnot. There's quite a lot of enemies here. So let's just get away from them and then stop running. Because again, even though we can see very well, which I guess is just because of the moon phase or whatever, um, they can't. So they can't really come and track us very well. Um, getting out of there is the tricky bit. If we start moving, you'll see they're going to probably migrate towards the shop. I mean, the ones that were following us will not. They're going to try to track our scent trail. But some of these will probably migrate up towards the shop. And we're just going to take this as our uh, cue to leave. We got quite a lot of ammunition, which is what we were looking for. Not really in the calibers that I would have liked, but what are you going to do? Uh, it's hard to complain when you just walk away with hundreds of rounds of ammunition. We do have one tracking our scent up there, but that's not really a big deal. Or maybe she's following the sound of the shopping cart making noise, but it's not making that much noise. So you can see how that would have been a pretty dangerous situation if you were like a new player who didn't really know, who can't stay calm, I think is really a key thing. When I first started playing and I would get in a situation like that, I would have a little mini freak out internally, like, oh my God, there's so many of them. What do I do? And what I've learned over the course of the game is like, Mostly it's not that big of a deal. You can just walk away from them. Manage your stamina appropriately. Sprint if you have to, but then go back to run, walking as soon as you feel comfortable doing so. You can move right between them. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a matter of who's faster than who and what you know. how dangerous are the enemies. And mostly what we saw there, there was a grappler. I should have talked about this as we saw them so I could talk you through why it was okay to do this. Um, the grappler was probably the scariest thing because it could have pinned us in place and let the tough zombies beat on us. Then there were a bunch of regular zombies and tough zombies, which were not a big deal um, individually, but obviously in a horde are an issue. And then we saw quite a few feral runners. Feral runners were the ones that were most likely to follow us a long distance. Um, like once we got away from them, they were the ones to likely show up several turns later after we've found safety, so to speak. They would have tracked us all the way back. But uh, they, they really didn't even follow us, so it wasn't a big deal at all. Didn't even need the shopping cart. Let's go ahead and drop our bounty. Uh, we got quite a lot of ammunition. A lot of 9 mil, so I'm leaning towards 9 mil. We got a lot of 22, but 22 is pretty trash. 9 mil is slightly better um, than 22. Maybe even one would argue significantly better, just because of the, the guns themselves are also pretty much better. Fair bit of 357, which would fit those the SIGs that we had. Um, a little bit of 223. No 556. Again, those are like military rounds, so it's not something that I'm super shocked by. Um, I think most civilian rounds is 22, 9 mil, and like some 357 would be my guess. If you had to ask me, maybe 45 is a pretty common. Uh, if you had to ask me what are the most common ammunitions that you would find in just some random guy's house in America, probably 9 mil, right, would be like the number one thing. If you're in a country, lots of people have 22 rifles would be my 
my go-to. And then for hunters, I mean, I know a guy who hunts with a 45, but like mostly it's uh, like, what, 30-06, right? I really don't know ammunitions very well. 357, all I can think of is like older handguns, older revolvers are 357. I don't know guns very well. I, I gotta assume 9mm is the most common because like, aren't Glocks the most common handgun in the world? They're 9mm. Um, and in fact, I know several people who own Glocks and it's, it's they're 9mm, aren't they? Probably the most common handgun in the world would be 9mm if you're talking civilian owned. I don't know. Um, regardless, anyway, <laughs> it's irrelevant. Um, we have, we don't have guns in all of these calibers, so it's not like the, the 40, we're not really, I don't think, have anything that can use that. Um, same with the 410 shot. I don't think we have anything that fires this. So even though we got 100 rounds of it, one, it's a pretty low damage, if I remember right, because they're relatively small. How much damage are you? 30. I mean, that's respectable. Uh, shotgun rounds are usually closer to 60. If we go to the double lot, it's 50. Um, so they're not terrible. Uh, and let's look at 9 mil compared to 22. 9 mil is 24. 22 is 12, I think. Is 6. <laughs> yeah, 22. That might just be that particular 22. Yeah, 11 for the, the full metal jacket, which is uh, more what I would expect. 12. Six for the rat shot, which makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, it obviously is is co not comparable per se. These are about double the damage of a twenty-two. Nine mil is a perfectly fine, acceptable ammunition to use if you find a Glock because they're very common in the game. And then you you're like, oh man, I only found a nine mil pistol. No, it's okay. It's not super terrible, but I would rather have one if I'm using a handgun. I'd rather it be like a three fifty-seven or a forty-five. And if I'm using a rifle, I prefer the um, SIG 5.56, which is what we have here, or 5.52, excuse me, um, which fires 5.56. And because it's a rifle round and this is a pretty all around rifle, um, it deals more damage per bullet than a 9mm would. And because it's a rifle, it's better than a handgun. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, point is, we found quite a lot and we will. Uh, be a little bit more comfortable using guns in the future because we have this more uh more of a ammunition supply available to us again would have liked more 223 or 556 but that's okay we once we start clearing labs we will have all the 556 we will ever need it's just a matter of we have to get to the labs and get in the labs anyway we eluded the gun shop we got halfway to putting an engine in our in our humvee so I think we'll call the episode here. We're at 30 minutes. Yeah, so for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Hopefully my rambling and uh, lack of understanding about different caliber handguns and whatnot are, are not are not super off-putting. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.